One way to make waves in the music business is to put on a one-of-a-kind music festival. Siget in Budapest, Rock in Rio, and California's Coachella, just to name a few. But there's a lot at stake for both the performers and the promoters. The idea of a music festival, great. The logistics of making it happen successfully and profitably, very tough. The bigger the show, the more pressure to book the best acts. So how do promoters decide who will hit the stage? Headliners are the easy picks. The Beyonce's, the Ariana Grande's, but what about the B, C, and even D-list artists who haven't hit it big? Industry insiders call them green bananas. These are artists who are relatively unknown or green. Promoters bank on them being more popular or ripe by the time their festival rolls around. When you sign them, they could be completely unknown or just getting a little bit of buzz. But six months, eight months, nine months, 12 months down the road, they've broken through and they become huge and therefore they become a draw. One of the most famous examples of a green banana turned ripe is rapper Cardi B. Before she hit it big, Coachella's promoters saw the potential for their 2018 festival and they plucked her from a bunch of other ripening bananas months before the big show. Coachella's promoters knew they'd cash in big time. They did the math, but Cardi B did not. I didn't know that Coachella was just such a big deal like that. Coachella paid her $70,000 per weekend. That's a total of $140,000. But the cost of her stage set alone, $600,000. So instead of making money, she lost at least $460,000 to play Coachella. I have to invest so much money on my stage set, my own money that I gotta go to Wells Fargo and write a check that is crazy. She learned her lesson the hard way. There are other things artists have to think about, including actually getting there. Some artists travel easier than others. Canadian EDM duo Loud Luxury have played festivals all over the world from EDC Mexico to Veld in Toronto. Our biggest strength and weakness as DJs is the fact that we don't travel with a lot of equipment the way that a band would. You know, we don't have a tour bus, we fly everywhere. So we can do a lot of shows and, uh, you know, play a lot of cities at once, even double up, play two shows in the same day. Playing back-to-back -back shows in one place is a smart move for many artists, but there is something in the festival world that can prevent them from doing this very thing. This is known as a radius clause. It's an agreement which prevents artists from playing within a certain radius from the festival, sometimes months before and after the event. Coachella's radius clause actually turned into a legal battle. Two Oregon promoters launched a lawsuit against Golden Voice, the promoter for Coachella. The festival's founders approached SZA in 2018 to play their festival sold out, but they were turned down because Coachella's clause prevented artists from playing any festival in North America from December 15th to May 1st, as well as any concerts in Southern California during the same time. An American judge, however, dismissed the lawsuit in 2019, siding with the Golden Voice attorneys and preventing the other promoters from refiling their suit. So booking artists for festivals can get fiercely competitive because promoters are trying to make sure their big show is the one you pick and the festivals at the top usually stay there. In 2017, Coachella crossed the $100 million mark, making it the first time a festival has hit a nine-digit gross. Festivals can make the most money when things go according to plan, but there are many factors that can make or break an entire event. Promoters firstly have to foot the bill for the space. They then have to consider other big expenses, things like parking, sanitation, food, and garbage, and unexpected weather. Rain put a damper on one of Canada's biggest music festivals, Oshiega, during its first couple of years. People wait, and they wait until the day of, and then if it's nice, then they come, and it, that's really, I mean, if you're a festival promoter, weather is your biggest concern coming close to your event. You're looking at, the, you know, I've got seven weather apps on my phone. I've got connections all over the city to get people to tell me what's happening. Oshiega had only about 25,000 people show up to its first ever event in 2006, a measly number compared to 2018's event, which drew 135,000 people. Now, it, with six stages and uh, over 50,000 people a day, um, you're talking about massive logistics. We start working, we work on it all year long now. The infrastructure that we're building is basically a city, and I think we employ something like 5,000 people. So imagine, you know, that kind of logistical nightmare. 
that's one way to describe a music festival, especially because while some are successful year after year, not all of them have a happy ending. We have to talk about the Fire Festival. It will go down as one of the biggest festival flops in history. Its organizers, Billy McFarland and rapper Ja Rule, had never put together a festival before. And they promised a luxury experience on the beautiful islands of Exuma in 2017. But the entire event crumbled into chaos. Uh, nobody was in control and um, we didn't really know what was going on. Fire was such a disaster that McFarland was sentenced to six years behind bars for wire fraud. Many people paid tens of thousands of dollars to go, and everyone was forced to camp out in what one person called a tent city. And they ate meals that looked like this. None of the headliners, including Blink-182, actually performed. But fire is an extreme example of what can go wrong. Now artists have more of an incentive than ever to do festival gigs. Most people are listening to music through streaming services, but artists likely only get a small cut of the revenue. Most artists nowadays make the bulk of their money through touring, including festivals. So although festivals usually last only a weekend or two, a lot hinges on the months leading up to that small blip of time many consider the highlight of a summer. Planning, promotion, and picking the perfect green bananas that will hopefully be ripe by festival season.